Hello and welcome to this video from Electronics for Engineers on a 4-bit synchronous counter that has a programmable maximum and minimum count. We're going to build it and test it using Tinkercad. We're going to be using the 7474 flip-flops on Tinkercad. Each chip has two flip-flops and we're going to use four flip-flops in all. We're going to pull the set and reset pins high via 220 ohm resistors so that we can force them to be high or low. Got exclusive OR gates on the 7486. We'll use some of those for the synchronous counter logic itself. We've got the 7408 AND gates. So we're going to use some of those for the synchronous counter logic and we're going to use the 7424 input NAND gate. We're going to use one of those for the maximum and minimum count reset or set function. And there's the truth table for the NAND gate. It's only low when all of the inputs are high. So we get our breadboard with power and ground. We have two 7474 flip-flop chips which provide us with four flip-flops, a 7486 exclusive OR gate chip where there's four exclusive OR gates on. We have a 7408 AND gate and a 7420 four input NAND gate which we'll use later. And then we just power the chips up. That NAND gate should have been powered with a red wire really. And then we're going to pull all of the set and reset pins high through a 220 ohm resistor so that they do not set or reset unless we want them to. Provide a wire to put the clock in. So all of the flip-flops so that they're clocked at the same time. So I've wired all the clocks together because it's a synchronous counter and here I've connected not QA to its own data input. Now we provide the QA output and not QA so that they're available on the board for wiring later and we do that for all of the Q and not Q outputs. And the reason for this is because it makes it easier to wire to them later and it makes your design less messy. Next we take the QA output, which I've labelled as A, and put it into one input of an exclusive OR gate. The other input of that exclusive OR gate is the output B or QB. The output from this exclusive OR gate feeds the data input of the second flip-flop. Now we move QA over and put it into an AND gate along with QB and the output of this AND gate will feed a second exclusive OR gate. The other input to this exclusive OR gate is output QC. So here we wire the output C or QC to the other input of the exclusive OR gate. The output of that second exclusive OR gate feeds the data input of the third flip-flop. Now instead of having this second AND gate, we already have the function A and B from the first AND gate, so we just copy that into a third AND gate. But what you'll realise is we do not need the second one that's highlighted here. So we feed A and B, and we AND that with QC. So the output of this AND gate is A and B and C. This feeds an exclusive OR gate.
The other input to this exclusive OR gate is the Q output of the fourth flip-flop or QD. And finally all we need to do is take the output from that exclusive OR gate and feed it into the data input of the fourth flip-flop. And now we're all done. So now that we've finished the counter, I'll get a second breadboard on which I can put LEDs to show the count and some switches to create a master reset. We need a power supply and a function generator with a square wave output at a low frequency. Wire up the power and the function generator and make sure that you don't short circuit any of your power or ground wires. We need four LEDs four current limiting resistors and then we ground those. We're going to bring up output QA on column 9, then output B on column 7, output C on column 5 and output D from the fourth flip-flop on column 3. And now you can see it counting from 0 to 15. What I'm going to do now is make the Q outputs available on the board as I did earlier, so it's easier to wire to them. So I'm going to bring over QA and not QA, QB from the LED and not QB from the flip flop, QC and not QC, and of course QD and not QD, so that we can use them later on in the circuit. So if we feed all of the Q outputs into a 4 input NAND gate. When we reach the maximum count, all of the inputs to the NAND will be high, so the output goes low, and that will reset any flip flop that we connect this NAND signal to on the reset pins. But when the flip flops are then reset, this makes their Q outputs go low again. And then when the Q outputs go low, the flip-flops are no longer reset and they can continue to count normally. On power-up, all flip-flop Q outputs are low, therefore all not Q outputs are high. If we feed all not Q outputs, which are high on power-up, into a 4-input NAND gate, the NAND output will be low and will force a reset on all flip-flops connected to it. This means the counter cannot count until any of the switches are pressed or slid if we're using slide switches. As soon as any switch position is changed from what is shown here, it will switch one Q output, which are low on power up, to the NAND gate. The NAND output will then go high. Due to the active low reset pins of 7474 flip flops, this will stop the counter from being permanently reset and will allow counting to start. We can manipulate these switches to force a reset at a maximum count of our choice. If we want the counter to count to 8 or 1000 in binary, we press or slide the switch labelled max count D, so that QD, which is low on power up, feeds the NAND gate. We keep all other switches connected to the not Q outputs. The counter will then count until it reaches 8 or 1000 and due to this switch configuration the NAND will be presented with all 1s on its inputs and will reset the count to 0. As long as at least one max count switch is in the Q position the counter will continue the count. The max count itself will not show on the LEDs though because as soon as the max count is reached all LEDs go low again when the counter resets. So if we want to reset at count 8, the LEDs will display up to count 7 and then go low when count 8 is reached. So now we put four slide switches which are actually single pole double throw switches. They are the maximum count switches, switch A, B, C and D. We connect A and not A b and not b, and so on. The 
the four outputs from these switches will feed the four input NAND gates, but be careful not to use the not connected pin. And the white wire is the output from this NAND gate, which will be our master reset signal, which will feed to all of the reset pins of the four flip flops. So we bring the master reset signal down and we connect all four reset pins to it. So now all of the four flip flops will be reset at the same time when the maximum count is reached. To start with, all of the slide switches are pulled to the right. I'm putting an LED to show the state of the NAND output. With all the slide switches pulled to the right, the NAND gate output is low. So this means all of the flip flops are reset and cannot count. As soon as any switch is pressed, the counter can count, but then it will stop if we pull the switches low when it reaches the end of its count. If I switch the switch that was called max count D, that has a maximum count of eight, so the counter will count up to seven and then reset and continue to do so. Here the max count is 12, so it will count up to 11, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and then reset on 12. Now the maximum count is four, so it will count up to three and reset. It actually reaches the fourth state, but it doesn't show it on the LEDs. We can take this idea a step further. When the max count is reached and the NAND gate provides an active low signal, instead of just resetting all flip-flops, we can put that active low signal into some of the set pins instead. So we can choose which flip-flops get reset and which gets set, and this will give us a forced minimum count from which the counter will continue to count up until it reaches the maximum count and it will repeat itself. So what we'll do is we'll take away the wires that force the reset on all the four flip-flops, and we'll take the active low output from the NAND, which is produced from the maximum count, and this active low signal can be either fed to the set pins or to the reset pins of individual flip-flops via slide switches. This means that we can decide whether or not to set or reset each individual flip-flop, and if we set some and reset others, then this provides a forced minimum count from which we can count up. So let's get rid of the common master reset by getting rid of the white wires which are bringing the NAND signal to the reset pins. Then we feed the active low output signal from the NAND gate into the center of four separate switches. 
these switches will be connected to the four flip-flops and the active low signal will either feed the set pin or the reset pin. So on the left hand side of the switches we'll put the signal to the set pins and on the right hand side of the switches we'll put the signal to the reset pin. So once we simulate, all of the flip-flops are reset at the moment because the active low NAN signal is forced to all of the reset pins via the four switches on the right and the NAND LED is low. So on power-up with all of the switches slid to the right-hand side, all of the flip-flops are reset from the active low NAND signal. As soon as any switch is pressed, this will force the NAND output to go high and counting can start. So when all the switches are to the right, nothing can happen, even though clock pulses are appearing. As soon as we change any switch, it will start to count. Here I've got a maximum count of 9, so it will count to 9 and then reset to 0. But if I change one of the minimum count, for instance the third one, it will reset as such to the count of 4 and then count up to 9. Now the minimum count is 6 and the maximum count is 9, 6, 7, 8, 9, then back to 6 and so on. Finally I've added a smaller breadboard with a 7 segment display which you need to make common cathode and a seven segment display driver on Tinkercad and then I'll just wire it up. Then we need to carefully wire each output through a 370 ohm resistor to the correct segment of the display. Now the counter is in a forced reset until we do a max or min count. Here I've got a minimum count of 4, but the display doesn't show from 10 to 15 anyway. So I'll make the max count 10 and it will display from the minimum count of 4 up to 9. Now the minimum count is 6 and the maximum count is 10, so it will count from 6 to 9, and so on. So I really hope you've enjoyed watching this video. It's been a lot of fun to make, and I hope it's useful. I hope you have a go on Breadboard or Tinkercad and make this fully programmable minimum and maximum count synchronous counter using D-type flip-flops. And please do like and subscribe to my page. And I'd welcome any comments and anything else that you'd like me to build. And thanks so much for watching.